Well, let's speak to Sky's John Sparks, who's in Newfoundland uh, for us. Uh, morning to you, John. Um, what is this investigation going to look like? Uh, hi, Samantha. Look, before we get into that, let me just show you where we are at the moment. You can see a blue uh, ship, a supply ship. It's called Polar Prince. Polar Prince is the supply vessel that took the submersible Titan out to sea. And it has just arrived back in the port of St. John's. You can probably see a smaller white vessel to the left of it. That's the, the pilot vessel that brought the ship in. There are men on board. They've been tying up the supply ship. I haven't seen anybody disembark yet. We expected the, Pol the Polar Prince to dock in the center of town, but it's come across the other side of the port and it has come in at the Royal Canadian Navy base, where the security obviously is, is much tighter and we are up on an elevated bank with other journalists getting shots from the other side of the fence. Well, you can see now that the first crew members getting ready to disembark. The ship that left the port of St. John's eight days ago on, on a Friday with 17 crew members on board, 24 people in total, and it has returned with five less people on board. So obviously this is a, a sad homecoming for them. They are coming back without the five people that were on the submersible Titan. You can see there's quite a lot of activity on board. I can tell you that this ship is now subject to a investigation and inquiry from the Transportation Safety Board of Canada. The ship is flagged in Canada. There will be representatives from the safety board there to receive them. They will begin their inquiries. They will want to know what the Polar Prince's role was but the regulatory framework here is very complicated. The submersible itself is not classified as a vessel, as a proper ship. It's not subject to the sort of requirements that flagged vessels are. And this is one of the things that the CEO of Stockton Rush did to essentially sidestep the regulatory framework with his company, with his trips down to the Titanic. Neither did he have his submersible classified by a marine industry body. So these bodies not in a position to conduct investigations either. So the regulatory framework here is complicated. We do expect the U.S. Coast Guard to take a leading role in the investigation. That hasn't actually been announced yet, but we do. They, they led this huge international ad hoc search and rescue operation to try and find the submersible. So clearly they will take a key role. There's also a transportation safety body in the US. They will also be involved as well. But it's, it's very complicated. Ocean Gate, they were registered in Washington state. They've now closed down. Uh, the submersible was, was registered in the, the Bahamas. So again, it, it's going to take some time. I think we, we will see several, if yeah. not many investigations going on and I think we will see a future where sub submersibles are regulated in a way that they haven't been uh, so far because of this uh, tragedy but that's it that's the polar prince eight days at sea it took two days to get back from the wreckage of the Titanic it is a long trip almost 400 miles 17 crew members on board. There were 24 people in total, but it has come back with five less, five less people who were on the Titan submersible. Stockton Rush, the CEO of Ocean Gate, the explorers, Hamish Harding, Britain, British billionaire based in Dubai, Paul-Henri Najolet, a famous French explorer. He was referred to as, as Mr. Titanic. He'd done something like 35 dives to the Titanic site. And then uh, the Dayuts, uh, Suleiman, a 19-year-old, and his father, Shazada. It was a, we understand, a Father's Day treat for his son to go down to the wreck. Uh, but they were not, 
they were they were keen explorers explorers and I think it's important to make a distinction between the Dayudes and the three other men. The three other men would have known, should have known, would have known what they were getting into. They would have known the risks of a catastrophic rupture under sea. So the Polar Prince, it's back. It is a, a sad, ho sad homecoming for that crew. Less people on board than they went out with, not the way anybody would want things and I am sure that in the next few minutes, the next hours, we will see people begin to disembark from that ship.